the sports desk is gearing up for the fall season. We finish up the football previews with one of the South Bay's best teams from last year. Bishop Montgomery got school and street cred with a winning record. Can they post another great one this year with the young QB at the helm? In volleyball, the Lady Knights start with a new coach and a stellar defense. Is it enough for the Delray League, though? And in the Pioneer League, the Lady Saxons look to catapult themselves back up to the top with key returners who plan to make a difference. And the Tartar volleyball team is led by a strong setter. She says she can help lead the rest of the offense back to the top of league. In junior college, the Lady Warriors of El Camino look to dominate this season with a stellar starting lineup. They need to pick it up from last season. You want to know more? Get fired up. It starts now. Desk. I'm your host, Bonnie Prickett. The best thing about a new school year is being able to go out and support your favorite team. Is it the Spartans, the Tartars, the Warriors, or the Saxons? Maybe it's the Knights. Last year, they did something. They made an impression. Yes, most definitely, the Knights football team made it to the playoffs. This year, they could be poised to make a nice go in the Delray League. They lost a lot of players, though, and their quarterback is a sophomore. But they do have more than a few secret weapons. Let's go ahead and take a look. In 2010, the night football program was like a phoenix that rose from the ashes after years of being deemed the team everyone else could beat. Ed Hodgkiss coached them to a shiny 9-2 record. In this second year, Coach Hodgkiss brings this philosophy to his squad. It's changed. Uh, last year, we were, you know, we, we had to teach them how to win, and uh, they were able to accomplish that and win. And I, I think we really didn't have the target on our back last year at all. This year, we're, we're approaching it completely different. You know, we're not hoping to win anymore. We expect to win, and that's kind of what we're going with. The Knights' winning season last year was made possible by outstanding running back Nolan Plummer, who would go for over 2,000 yards, and of course, powerful play by Christian Holloway and Kevin Paredes. Though they lost talent on their roster and have a few underclassmen in key positions, they do have returning players where it makes a difference. Our defense is definitely, definitely going to be one of our strong points this year. We have four returning linebackers. Um, our safeties and DBs are just outstanding. I think our defense is going to be the best part of our game this year. Senior Miles Howard tells us it's not just the key returners that will make the defense good. Uh, corners are fast, linebackers are fast, safeties are fast. The ends are looking really good right now, so we should be solid on defense. The offense scored an average of 43 points per game and were led by senior quarterback Mark Nguyen. This year they're led by Louis Soto. He's a sophomore transfer from Sarah. At six foot, 200 pounds, he hasn't had a snap at the varsity level, but his teammates don't seem to mind. Louis, he's, he's a great guy, he has a great arm, and I have full confidence in his passing game. The biggest loss on offense is losing running back Nolan Plummer, who was a workhorse of last season's running attack. The Knights look to running backs Blake Alt and Javon Siliga and others to fill the gap, and there's confidence there. I think that they can fill in that spot, and most of them are seniors. Last year they were juniors backing them up, but I think they'll do well this year. The Knights' preseason schedule is packed with tough games against Salesian and El Segundo. But if the players feed into their coach's philosophy about one game at a time, the old adage of luck is preparation meeting opportunity could mean a solid run in the Delray League. And good luck to these guys. Nolan Plummer was an outstanding running back for the Knights. Don't forget he rushed over 2,000 yards. He did get hurt in the playoffs last year, though. So he takes his quickness to Willamette University in Oregon. Kristen Holloway is a defensive end they will sorely miss. And Kevin Paredes is over in Missouri where he'll play wide receiver at Southwest Baptist University. The key returners are Tyler Naalei, and he's a great four-year starter and a strong safety as well. Patrick, Patrick Friedman, excuse me, is a running back, and he's one of the returning linebackers. Miles Howard brings speed to both sides of the ball. Big Ben Villa. Villa is a force on the O-line, and finally, Javon Saliga is part of the run attack, and someone better on the, on the opposing offense better watch out. Let's go and take a quick look at the Knights' two preseason games. The Knights capped out a good first 
win against Vista Del Lago with a final score of 41 to 23. Their second week game versus Salesian didn't have the wanted result. The Knights just couldn't get it going as they lost 42 to 13. They now stand at one and one next week. They host El Segundo. Moving along, the Spartans are sparking it in the preseason with a nice win over Irvine. Here are a few stats. Colton Glandorf carried the ball 11 times for 92 year yards in the second half touchdown while on the defense. Brandon Loera rushed for 88 yards and a touchdown. Hayden Finley had interceptions in both the first and second half. And in the second half, he found the end zone, 18 yards in it, by the way. Man, between he and Glandorf, it must have been a great day. Center James Paxad is out for two weeks with a knee injury. Southwell hosts Burbank this week. The North Saxons football team lost on the road against Peninsula at a PV 21-12. Ryan McDaniel unfortunately left the game with an MCL injury midway through the first quarter. We will let you know more about that injury later on. I hope he heals soon. But on a high note, junior quarterback Jorge Hernandez threw 22 completions on 35 attempts for 286 yards and a touchdown. Devontae Jenkins had eight catches for 85 yards and Michael Dorado had eight catches for 84 yards. North's next game is Friday at home against Cabrillo. The Torrance Tartars, they beat Bell Gardens for the first game of the year. Rock Hollis is most likely very excited with Tyrone Taylor lighting up the scoreboard. And of course, it came from the help of Jacob Kalama. He's a junior, you know. And funny man or fast man, whatever you want to say. Quaco was fantastic with an 80-yard kickoff return. The Tartars will host West this week. And moving on to junior college football, we have the El Camino Warriors. Coach Featherstone's crew was slow going in the game against Grossmont, but it's, uh, they got it going in the third quarter. 34-7 is the final score. Peter Walton came in with two TDs. Jared Gerard Shaw actually had a visit to the end zone. Omar Herrera struggled a bit in the first half, but like him, the rest of the team, he got it started in the second. Elko goes into their third game against Golden West with a 2-0 record. And that wraps it up for the football report. Hopefully all of the injuries will heal soon and get ready for league play. The Lady Knight Volleyball Preview is coming up after the break. Last season, the Knights armor wasn't as shiny, but this fall brings big changes. Can it help? 30. 45. 15. Every mile brings us closer. 25. Every mile in a city near you. Seven and a half miles. Help us stop diabetes. 12. Join the Tour de Cure. Register to ride. 36. Or sponsor a rider. 30. 35. Call 1-888-DIABETES or visit us online at diabetes.org forward slash tour. How many miles will you ride? 25. Hi, I'm Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn. Keep an eye on the sports desk. The Bishop Montgomery Volleyball Program is very storied here in the South Bay. And the 2010 season, the Lady Knights came in around 500%. They were mostly underclassmen, though, and you know what that makes them now? Hungry. Kevin Norman is a boys' volleyball coach, and he's taking responsibility of running the girls' team this season. Sports desk reporter Ashley Morgado, a former college volleyball player herself, went to practice to get insight into the expectation of the Knights. Three, one, two, three, nice. Nice. Oh, you guys the Lady Knights of Bishop Montgomery are getting ready for another season of volleyball. This team went 8-0 in league and lost in the second round of CIF playoffs last season. They are starting fresh with new expectations and a new coach. This will be my first season with the girls. I coach the boys, so I've been coaching girls for a long time. I actually like coaching girls. They tend to work with each other a little bit better. You know, they want it for each other, not just for themselves, you know, so that's kind of a nice thing. That's right, newly appointed girls volleyball head coach Kevin Norman used to be the coach for the boys volleyball team at Bishop Montgomery. Although he has coached girls before, his background with a fast-paced, tough boys team could help the girls in their season. Our new coach Kevin is great. He has just come right in and uh, is leading us and teaching us a lot and is very informative and so we're gaining a lot of experience. Having Coach Norman will prove to be a huge advantage for this team, but the bigger advantage the Lady Knights have is how they measure up against their opponents. 
Well, we have a really tall team, so I think blocking is going to be pretty good. This team has the height, which makes their quick offense lethal. But with the great improvement of key players over the summer season, their offense will prove more effective. Well, I think we have a lot of people that can get it done. I, you know, we definitely have some big time players in you know three positions that you know I feel pretty confident against against anybody they can put the ball away. You know, one of those being Ashley Murray in the middle, um, Bria Green on the outside, and uh, Shannon Dayton on the right side. With three big-time hitters, Coach Norman was hoping to run a 6-2 offense, but because of an injury, he will have to change his plan of attack. Now we're running a 5-1, but we've been kind of doing a modified 5-1, 6-2 sometimes. Uh, right now, one of our uh, setters is injured, so we will be running a 5-1. Starting a season with a new coach and a player down might make a team crumble, but not this team. The Knights are incredibly optimistic and confident in their experienced team. I think we're connecting well. We've all played together the past four years, a lot of returners, so we have a good connection. We play well together. It's just a chemistry that we have. We really like each other, and we really do hang out outside of volleyball together, so that makes us closer for the team and for volleyball. Chemistry aside, these girls just love to play especially when it's against rival school Redondo, and Coach Norman may have added a little flame to that fire. Playing Redondo next week, which is a, you know, I've coached there and I still coach there in soccer, so it's always a rivalry when I came here from the boys at Redondo, and that was always kind of a big game, you know, that they're always up to play against me. This team has the ability and strength to have just as much, if not more, success as last year. If they run the quick offense and back it up with some solid defense, they should have no problem getting to the playoffs, especially when you add in their height and power hitters. For the Sports Desk, I'm Ashley Mergado. Thanks to Ashley for the report. Just a quick update. Last year's libero, Carly Naramore, is playing for the University of San Francisco. Bria Green is a returning varsity player with height and raw talent. She's already committed to the University of Alabama. Green had three and a half kills per game last season. Shannon Dayton is six feet and she's a senior right side hitter returner. Captain Hannah Castillo is the setter with 7.4 assists per game. Last year, Hannah never missed a serve. We've got another volleyball preview coming up after the break. And the Lady Saxons lost a lot of seniors to graduation. After the break, we find out if that's enough to topple them. Hi, Mom. Hi, sweetie. How's it going, buddy? I'm bored. I think I'll ride my bike. It may never be this easy to help your kids find balance, but you have more power than you know. The Weekend Parents Handbook and Website can help you maximize that power. You'll learn how to help kids choose healthier foods and how to make it fun for them to get active. Who can help kids maintain a healthy weight? We can. Visit the WeCan website for a free Parents Handbook plus tips, tools, and resources. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. When a disaster strikes, time is a killer. The UN Central Emergency Response Fund jumpstarts relief efforts which saves lives. Help us help in time. Donate now at rapiddisasterrelief.org. The North Saxons graduated a lot of players last year, but they're still looking to perform this season. Head coach Mark Piak is calling on his key returners to help them get back to former glory. Are there setbacks with losing players? Reporter Ryan Fournier digs this one up. Determined, talented, potential, hardworking, young. These are some of the words that describe this year's Lady Saxons volleyball team. Any team will sound young after losing 11 seniors from the year before. But with some talent coming back and hard work, Mark Piaf feels really good about his team's chances. With, with 12 girls, we really, you know, they kind of defined themselves early on in the summer. 
Uh, we kind of made, made that team right away. And so we've been working more cohesively as a group, I would say more so than we have in any other previous years. And that's been really nice. And just all the girls are stepping up in different ways. And they understand their roles and they're taking those on. And we're having success individually, but they're playing together, which makes us a decent team. Speaking of individual talent, I got a chance to talk to a couple of the team captains about this upcoming season. Team building has gotten this team excited and very close, maybe more so than last year's squad with a lot of seniors. I really like our team this year, even though we're really young. We have a lot of potential and a lot of talent, and I hope this year we can finally get a league title because I think we really deserve it because we've been working really hard. We've grown so much as a team, and I, we just really like each other. We've grown so much over off season. It's been, it's gonna be a good year, I think. We're excited because a lot of the young, like, a lot of the people are in my grade, and we have two other freshmen and then a sophomore. So it's gonna be pretty good this year, and we're excited to be together and play. Some of the seniors that will be leaving from last year's big squad are players like Elise Tizon, Ariel Richard, and Holland Seymour. But Coach Piak is looking to the future. I had a couple of girls that were with me for three seasons, but I also have the two seniors now that have been with me for three seasons, plus another one's been with for two. Uh, my setter is a, a veteran, even though she's only a junior. You know, as a sophomore, she played. So we do have some experience, but clearly, obviously, losing that many seniors in one shot definitely is going to hurt us in terms of experience. But it also, you know, they don't know any better. So, you know, and that can be a good thing and a bad thing. Right now, I'm going to say it's actually pretty much a good thing because they're just going out there and competing, and that's all I can really ask as a coach. Eleven seniors are gone from last year's squad. Losing that kind of experience is an obvious weakness. But what makes up for it is the strong friendship and teamwork that has gelled this team together. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Lady Saxons shake up their foes in the Pioneer League this year. Reporting from North High School with the Sports Desk, I'm Ryan Fournier. Thanks to Ryan Fournier for the preview. Holland Seymour is now playing volleyball at UC Davis. And Ariel Richard is playing volleyball at Coffin State. Ashley Morimoto, Nicole Echeverry, and Cameron Olds are the three seniors on this team. Good luck to them. The Torrance Tartar Volleyball Program has seen its fair share of success just been a couple of years. They have a good coach in Nathan Jones who's managed to bring out the best in his players. This year they are focusing on building the team chemistry since they're blending the JV team from last year and the varsity girls teams. You might think it's an unpleasant experience, but Gabriel Daddario explains how the Tartars are putting the pieces in place for a more successful fall season. The Torrance Tartars girls volleyball team is looking to rebound this season after a bleak 2010. Their overall record was 5-16, and, and their Pioneer League record was 2-5. and five. They lost four key players and are looking to heighten their expectations. Last year's record might reflect a lack of team chemistry, but senior Summer Gravit shares with us that this season, things should be different. This year, our team, we all get along really good, and I think it transfers onto the court as well as off, so hopefully that will lead us to do, have a better year. Middle blocker and team leader Marisa McGinnis shares with us what the biggest change is for her team. We needed to work on t team bonding because half of our team is from our JV team from last year, so we needed to work together and get used to playing, to each playing with each other. Even though their key losses included a lot of powerful players, this new team chemistry is helping during the preseason. They've learned what they're good at and where they can improve. Um, in preseason matches, we did well in our serving and offensive um, playing. We still have a lot of work to do in our talking and defense and getting the ball up and just communicating all around. While the team might be young, the Lady Tartars have depth on their side. We have people who could step in. We, a lot of us are very versatile, so we could play more than one uh, position. So if we have someone that gets hurt, we can move them around and help us. Another optimistic point the Lady Tartars have going for them is their offense. Marisa breaks it down for us. We usually run a pretty fast offense, but in times when we need to, we can run a slower offense. 
Lacking in height, the Tartars can't rely on just their blocking game, so they varied their defense. For the most part, we run a perimeter defense, but we do do some shifting and we've worked on rover defense. If the defense comes together and the offense has their expected velocity, they should perform well. Well, the girls told me some of the problem last season was the chemistry, or the lack of chemistry, that is. Let's see after about a month of preseason if these girls can get it together against their first match against South. For the Sports Desk, this is Gabrielle D'Addario. Thanks, Gabrielle, for the breakdown. The key losses for the Tartars again are libero Tori Takata and setter Lindsey Thompson. Key returners are Madison Brink, who Coach Jones believes is going to continue to prove, improve as an outside hitter, and Marisa McGinnis at middle blocker and Summer Gravette at outside hitter are senior leaders that make a difference. Stay tuned, we've got more after this break. Green, green, green. It's your home, it's your dream. And keep it healthy and clean Make it green, green, green Making it green starts from the ground up So make sure the air in your home is healthy for your family to breathe Test your home for the presence of radon Go to epa.gov slash radon Make it green, green, green When a village in India needs drinking water Whose hands are bringing it to them? 3.3 when a classroom in Nicaragua needs lights to facilitate education, whose tools make it work? When a village in Kenya needs food, whose efforts bring it to the people? <laughs> Engineers Without Borders USA answers the call with more than 225 university and professional chapters from a wide spectrum of disciplines. EWB USA reaches out to partner with developing communities throughout the world to solve many challenges that they face. With more than 400 sustainable engineering projects in more than 45 countries, our organization is changing the world. If you would like to find out more about how you, too, can change the world, visit www.ewb-usa.org and click Get Involved. Engineers Without Borders USA. Building a better world, one community at a time. <laughs> Welcome back. The El Camino women's volleyball team is one of the most dominating junior college programs of the last decade. Much of that is in part to the South Bay being a hotbed of talent and Coach LaValle Pattinson understanding just how to work with players at this level. Last year they didn't end as strongly as planned and Sports Desk reporter Patrick Alog breaks this year's preview down for you. El Camino Volleyball finished last season with a record of 24-3 and ended their season with a loss in the quarterfinals of the state tournament to Pierce College of Los Angeles. The team did lose some key players. We only had three sophomores last year. Um, Ashley Gideon, and she went on and is playing right now. Danella DiDomenico, she is at Arizona not playing, but being a student. And uh, Kehlani Tanivasa, and Kehlani's in the gym helping us today and finishing a few classes. So we miss them, but they're still in school doing well. Ashley Gidding is now playing at Chapman University and led the team in kills last season at 3.21 kills per set and was second in digs with 4.33 per set. Kehlani Tunavasa finished third in the team in kills with 2.69 per set and third in the team in digs with 3.4 per set. Danella Dinamenico, who's no longer playing but studying at Arizona State University, finished first on the team in digs with 4.96 per set. With the core group of returners coming into this year's El Camino Warrior Volleyball team, expectations are high that this year's team could duplicate last year's success when they finish number five in the state. Among the key returners are twin sisters Caitlin and Lauren Edwards who played their high school volleyball at West Torrance. Caitlin finished last season second in the team in kills with 2.95 percent, while Lauren finished fourth in the team in kills at 2.59 percent and second in blocks at 0.73 percent. Things are a little different this time around for them as they're looked upon as leaders. It's a little more pressure, I guess you could say, but I welcome it. Um, I take it as a challenge, and uh, I'm just hoping to get better every day. So, um, How have they responded to you? I think pretty well. Um, yeah, I'm trying to be, you know, keep more positive energy out there and, um, you know, keep the spark up, as Coach was saying. We expected a lot out of them last year, and we expect a little more out of them this year. Lauren's playing great. She was elected one of our team captains. Uh, she just really embraces responsibility. Smart kid. 
Um, Caitlin is equally responsive. Just the two great kids. You couldn't ask for a better athlete, a better student athlete. They take care of school. They're smiling. They're positive. They try hard, and they, they're just great to have in the gym. Also coming back is setter Sarah McFadden, who was the fourth best freshman in the state last year in assist with 9.54 per set. Sarah comes back with a, a lot more experience. She's a lot more physical and really sees the court a little better this season. Even though she was one of the top freshman setters last year, Sarah still feels like she can still improve upon her skill. A digging, I'd say more eye contact with my players to know what they're running, and just an overall like speaking louder, you know, running the defense and offense. Coach Patterson is expecting a lot out of the returning players. The experience that the freshmen will bring into the team as, as sophomores should help us. Um, they enjoy each other. I think uh, we can really, really be a solid group. We just need to find the right chemistry. Um, and Lauren and Caitlin and Sarah have really, you know, have really started a great nucleus to build around, so they're doing really well. Key newcomers include Talia Barnes, a 5'11 middle blocker, who last played collegiate volleyball in 2006 at Golden West College as she was out on mission, and Taryn Luafalamana, a transfer from the University of Arizona, who got injured last year and who will play at El Camino as a freshman. She has yet to be medically cleared. Is a fifth state championship and third in the last five years in the books for this El Camino team? I mean, I think that would be silly if we thought we didn't have to earn it. First, we have to win our matches in preseason. Then we need to do well in conference even to get us there. They can do uh, great things. So if that happens, it will be due to hard work. Um, if it doesn't happen, would be, I be disappointed? If we didn't try, I would. But I think this team has a lot of heart and they will definitely go for every goal and uh, jump over every obstacle and, and try to do the best they can to make their own history. The team did jump over their first obstacle, winning their first match of the season at home against Santa Monica College, three sets to none. Reporting from El Camino College, I'm Patrick Alog for the Sports Desk. Thanks again to Patrick Alog for that very informative report. A quick look at the key losses again. Donella Di Domenico, an outside hitter, and Kehlani Tenovasa is also a good opposite hitter. Thanks again for their help. And Ashley Gideon is continu continuing her play at Chapman. Lauren Edwards and Caitlin Edwards out of West, if you'll remember, are a key returner. And Sarah McFadden is at center. Good luck to the Lady Warriors as you continue your season. Now it's your turn to tell us something we don't know. Please let us know about any games, any profiles we should be covering. The way you can get in touch with us is call us at 310-618-5762. Email us at thesportsdesk at torrentca.gov. You can view all of our shows online at torrentca.gov, and they're all up on YouTube pretty quickly now, so watch it at home or on your smartphone. That's all we have time for today. So until next time, Torrents, play hard.